to the Death Forest. So if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you could probably pick up that I'm a huge fan of obscure horror media as well as obscure Japanese media. I mean, it's not that hard. You can practically tell I'm a weeb through the microphone, but nonetheless, when I have free time, I like to indulge myself for hours looking for some spooky stuff to enjoy. Well, in my most recent endeavor, I had been looking back on the entire Sad Satan epidemic that had graced the internet a few years ago, and decided to go back uh, to that old YouTube channel that hosted the footage uh, to see what else they had uploaded prior to the Sad Satan related content. The channel mainly consisted of your pretty standard horror content, mainly let's plays of horror games that hailed from the land of the rising sun, and one just so happened to catch my eye. While watching through a set of playthrough videos and just looking up the game on Google, I initially thought that this was another game made by the former owner of Obscure Horror Corner, due to first finding it on an itch.io profile aptly named Sad Satan. However, I immediately did not trust this link due to the past rumors of Sad Satan hosting a slew of malicious content and viruses, so who's to say this version wasn't edited in some way to have malicious content that can fuck up either my computer or my life. So after doing a little more research, I managed to find a Japanese link that led to a more trustworthy download of the game itself by the developer Kaz, and after a short read about the backstory and the download time, I was ready to enter the death board in the rabbit hole within it. I'll admit that finding story details about the game was kind of difficult, which is given since most of the content about this game still remains in its native tr Japanese untranslated, but I will try my best to convey to you guys uh, what the story entails since surprisingly there actually is one here. The game stars you as Yoshida, a young man in the throes of their moped breaking down, of which they just so happen to break down in the aptly named Death Forest. With your goal being to find parts to fix your scooter and get the fuck out of the forest before its local wildlife can awkwardly run into you, causing you to go missing. The gameplay is your pretty standard early 2010s indie horror romp. You're dropped into a mysterious area and told to collect a set number of things to escape while juking out various demons and interdimensional horror like Heaven's Star Football Player. However, Death Forest actually has some interesting aspects to it. First being that this game takes no fucking time to throw a monster at you, it's not even a minute in until the head ghost, Yoshi, comes at you from out of the fog, urging you to get off your ass and get moving. Our sweet hyper-realistic floating head waifu isn't the only thing that can kill you as you will also encounter two alien crackheads, Stalker and Stranger, and there is also Uma who is what I can only describe as that one freaky shit first encounter from Parasite Eve 2. Aside from the parts you have to collect for your moped, you must also watch out for your flashlight's battery life, and you need to also collect batteries throughout the map uh, because that shit drains them at an alarming rate. But it also kind of doesn't matter at the same time because the game isn't really that dark, so I don't know. 
There are also these books that you can find throughout the map that add to this, this sort of bestiary you can find in this really chill special menu with some cool ass music. I believe these are to help add to the understanding of the story, but it still remains untranslated. However, it's really neat to look at all these character models. They kind of remind me of old PS1 era game models, and I just really like the vibe of them. The game is also unique to the genre, as there is some scripted events to all the monsters, rather than them just spawning in and having a free-for-all. For example, when you go to the labyrinth to get the tire, the Parasite Eve monster will peer out of the corner before chasing you, or there's another freaky ass floating head that comes out from behind the bush causing me to shit my pants. There's also some weird aspects to the game, like a lot of the batteries being in the air for some reason, some books just seemingly being in impossible to reach places, however, there's one way I heard you can actually do it, but I have not been able to find any glitch to get me to those as of this writing and recording, so I don't know. The game can also be pretty janky and weird at times. Uh, I remember trying to speedrun the game just for fun one night, and no matter how fast I get to a certain point, uh, there would always be at one point where Yoshi randomly pops up on the screen and insta-kills you without her actually being in the actual area I was. I have no idea what causes this. If it's some anti-cheat thing implemented to ward off speedy gameplays, I don't know. I did manage to successfully speedrun the game once, matching the record of the only other guy that ran this game, but almost every other time, Yoshi had insta-killed me at some random point. This happened when I first tried to actually beat the game without speedrunning uh, in the rock tunnel for some reason, so I don't know, and I was actually taking my time during that part. So, I just don't know what this is. If anybody has any information on why Yoshi just randomly pops up and kills you, just let me know. But besides all those inconveniences, the ending is actually pretty sick. Instead of just getting to the moped and the game just cutting to an end screen, you actually get to ride the damn thing after all your trouble fixing it. I mean, it's also kind of janky and slow, but it, and it's really short, but uh, hey, it means something to me. Overall, the game is fairly fun and it, it short. It, that managed to, it managed to scare the hell out of me, and it was a lot of heart put into it, I can clearly tell. So thank you, Kaz, and thank you, Death Forest. You were a fun game, and I enjoyed playing it all the way to the end, and also the six million times I had to play it for this video. So thank you. So why am I talking about this game and what's the point of this video? Well mainly it's to bring light to a lesser known piece of media by introducing more people to it because Death Force is not just a game, but an entire media franchise. You see, since its inception in 2014 it has gone on to be extremely popular in Japan, where English speaking videos consisting mainly of Let's Plays only average about 10,000 plus views per video, on the Japanese speaking side of YouTube videos regarding Death Force can have upwards of 6 million plus views per video and feature an insane amount of variety from speed paints to fan animations to more. Well, this popularity did not go unnoticed, and in the same year of the game's release, Japan also saw the release of a movie based on the settings and events in the game. Uh, now, here's the real kicker. Uh, it went on to have four other sequels, uh, further expanding the story and characters. After discovering that this small little indie game spawned an entire set of movies, I knew I had to seek out these films and watch them, translated or not. My first step was Google. Oddly enough, that proved difficult as links pointed towards various American films and the very real Akigahara Suicide Forest. Uh, that is not what I wanted. Um, I then began typing in obvious things like Death Forest Japanese film, which of course provided more results. I now had the trailers of each film thanks to the Asian Wiki. I kid you not, that's the actual name. 
I then traced the trailer of the first film to YouTube, which led me to the film's distributor's site. After waiting for Chrome to poorly translate the site, I was able to find a Facebook link and the page. And at the time of writing, I was about to say I was met with a dead end and make a joke about pulling a Nick Robinson flying to Japan to find the movies because I had no other options. However, I actually did manage to find the last three movies for rent on Japanese Amazon video completely by accident while retracing my steps so I could talk about it in this video. Taken aback, I quickly raced to the group chat where my friends also awaited my discovery of the film, so without needing any other options, I still need to find the first two films in the series. After that, I will make a follow-up video talking about all the films. I honestly don't care if they are translated or not. I just found it so interesting that there are five films based off indie game, so something has to be working. I'm sorry to leave this video on a cliffhanger, but I really need to play up the suspense in the whole thing. That, and it caught me so off guard finding the films that I haven't been able to rent them yet, but they're dirt cheap, so I will be following up this video very, very soon. So now that I've shown you Death Force, what do you think about it? Have you played it before? Have you seen any of the films in the series? Did you know that the creator is also working on a full-length novel to give us even more lore? Tell me in the comments below. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this comeback after a long hiatus, and I'll be sure not to be gone for that long again. I have a lot of stuff on the way, and I can't wait to show you what I have in store. If you want to see more of what I do slash talk about or behind the scenes on videos, be sure to follow me on Twitter in the description below and on screen. Sleep tight, and I'll see you guys next time.